I think there was a reduction of 30% last season from the previous season in terms of the number of cautions. This season it's pretty consistent with, with last year, right? Seven cautions so far for simulation. I think six at this stage last season. I think it's an issue that the whole game has, has taken some care of. You know, nobody likes to see an act of simulation. You guys don't. You know, the managers have condemned their own players on occasions when that's been, been evident in a, in a game that they're that their team are playing in. So, you know, it is something that does the game no, no favours and we need to keep being as vigilant as we can be. Um, you know, again, it's something that we, we work hard on in our training sessions to try to be uh, you, vigilant on. Do you, you think there's going to be seven this season? Seven cautions for simulation, well, yeah. The whole season with all the teams. Well, obviously in the was, Premier League. In the yeah, Premier League, there's a couple. Yeah. It should have been nine. What I'm saying is it's OK saying you caution. It's, is that... Yeah. Are they, are they still getting booked for diving? I mean, you, you look at Ross Barkley's one the weekend, I think Moses was involved in it, so that should automatically. You're right, that, that's be the occasions higher. when we've chosen to caution, and you're right, there'll be some other occasions where either we've missed the, the offence, like you talked about Barkley, where the referee just doesn't get in the, quite in the right position and, 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 and doesn't, doesn't uh, see what, what actually happened, he gets fooled, if you like, um, or where they choose not to caution because they've got the element of. Of, um, of doubt about whether or not it is a dive. Because, of course, we're asking officials to, to accuse the player of cheating and, and you need that element of certainty to be able to do that. So there will be some occasions that, that that's not happened, but our, our evaluation of our officials that takes place on each and every game suggests that actually the instances of, mm. of referees having to make a judgment of simulation or not has also reduced. Mm -hmm. Does a player, and it would seem to be the case where it's supported, how many times have we ever seen a referee give a penalty where a player hasn't gone down? Now, that, 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 that's my second question. So, if referees start giving penalties where players don't have to go down, that might cut diving out as well. So, in terms of, obviously, players have got responsibility, but I've never seen a penalty given where a player stays on his feet. So, from a player's point of view, I'm just giving you, you know, my view on it would be... So, two questions. Sorry. Well, I think, I mean, <laughs> so take, taking the last one, taking the last question, I think, I think you're right. Uh, we need to be skilled to identify when a player has been genuinely impeded within the penalty area and penalise that as such. Um, we know we even if he stays on his feet? Yeah, even if he stays on his feet. You when's know, that ever happened? We, well, I mean, I'm sure there's been occasions, but certainly we don't want to encourage... We certainly don't want to encourage players to go down without contact. Um, we, like I said, we need to be skilled in identifying when there's a genuine offence where a player stays on his feet. I think we saw Phil Dowd refereeing uh, tonight, I'm sure last season in a game, I think about Sunderland, he, uh, he, he, he penalised an offence having tried to allow the advantage with a player who stayed on his feet. So it, it, can, it can happen. Um, for a penalty. You don't cost, cost, sorry, you don't, you don't the cost of the actual... Well, for a penalty. Yeah, for a penalty, yeah, I, I, I'd accept it doesn't happen doesn't happen quite so often, um, but again, that's part of, of, of what we need to do. In terms of this, we, on reflection, with the, the evaluation of the game, we also would agree that that's, that's a penalty kick. But this comes from, remember, this comes from a, uh, an unexpected back pass yeah, yeah. from the left fullback. So I don't Michael think it's an easy one for him. It's a so. really tough but call. Is that yeah. one way, if it's either a penalty or a yellow card, is the note in, should there be in between? Is that far away? I don't think yeah, you can say. Yeah. I could understand him not giving a penalty, he's so far away yeah. from it. But then how can you then give the decision that you, you book him and you're so far away? Because, as you said, it was unexpected, but... How can we see it of that? And, you know, a player first game gets a yellow card for that? Yeah, yeah, and there can be a third way, of course. The people say if it's not a penalty, it has to be a yellow card for simulation for diving. That's not always the case. There's a third way of just giving maybe a goal kick, you know, when there's an element of, uh, of doubt. Clearly, in this situation, Michael Oliver looked at that and felt with everything that, that, he, that he could see and with the, the use of the assistant that that was actually, um, that was actually diving. He didn't appreciate the contact. Do you feel as though these can of worms, because these are particularly emotive subjects, I think, the, grab, the grabbing in the box and the diving is, is a, the emotive subjects for fans, I think, um, as well as the media. Do you believe, as from the refereeing side, that they are the, if you like, disease that in the game that people suggest, or do you believe from a referee's side that actually it's not as big as what people suggest? I don't think it's as big a problem as what people think. I do think because of because of the emotions it, it creates when this happens, particularly if somebody gets away with an act of diving. It, it, it stirs up a, a lot of reaction, doesn't it? You know, uh, there's this feeling of injustice. Um, we 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 feel uh, pretty pretty bad about uh, you know, being conned by somebody who dives. You know, because we care about what we do. You know, and we want to be as accurate as we can be. So we you know we work hard to get in the right position. But sometimes you just don't quite call it right. And if it involves an act of simulation, then we feel pretty. So, pretty so bad when about they go down the box, this instance or another one, just describe in your mind what's the checklist that goes through a referee's. Well, you, you, you're looking, first of all, you're making a judgment of whether the players try to deceive you. And usually you're looking for no contact. Players going down with no contact. 
another occasion might be a player who clearly creates contact, and, and that's that's just as bad. I mean, a player who goes past the defender and sticks a leg out into the into the defender and goes over. But so there's contact, but that's being generated by the attacking player. It's an act in, intended to deceive me as the match official into awarding a free kick or penalty.